I think any time that you are um, kind of stepping into a, f um, which I guess now is kind of becoming a, a franchise or kind of carrying the torch um, and continuing the legacy of something that uh, made such an impact and continues to make an impact, not just cin cinematically, but also culturally. Um, I can't tell you how many dudes wear, you know, the aviators and, um, you know, still talk about Goose and Maverick and, you know, quote the movie. So it's not like the movie ever died and to be able to kind of re-energize it in a way and, and continue that story has, has been a, a really incredible journey for me. I think Maverick kind of, you know, plays by his own rules. Um, I think that it's, you know, Tom, which he has done kind of time and time again, created an iconic character. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's almost when you say the word Maverick, that's, that's kind of what you think of. You don't necessarily go to the, to the literal meaning of the word, you go to, um, you know, Tom's character. And he does, he, he is a Maverick. He, he does what he wants to do. Um, he's aggressive. Um, and yeah, he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum. I think when people see this film, they the big difference is the is the flying is the aerial footage. I mean, this is something that's never been done. I don't think it will ever be matched. I think the overall vision for the aerial sequences is to really put the audience in in uh, in the box, as they say, in 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 the cockpit. You are you're going to feel like you are flying um, with these guys. Uh, for better or worse, because we're doing some pretty hairy maneuvers. Um, but I think, as far as story goes, when you are first person, you know, kind of experiencing these things um, with these guys, I, I think it just adds a level of investment. I know Tom didn't want it to be any green screen. He wanted all the actors to be in the jets. That's something we signed up for. I don't think any of us really knew how tough that would be, um, myself included. And we started out in the Cessna, and then we went to the Extra 300, which was kind of doing all the aerobatics maneuvers. We also had to get all of this swim training going on because we had to be certified to fly over water in case we had to eject. So we had to have all of this survival training, which was very intense. You get blindfolded, strapped to a chair, in a dunker. Water fills up, they submerge you, spin you upside down, you're strapped in, blindfolded upside down, you gotta get out. Tom created an aviation program for us for, um, I think, for him and for ourselves and everybody to feel comfortable putting us up in these jets because it's not, it's, it's very serious um, what we're doing. It's actually, no civilians ever have the amount of hours that we have in these jets. It's just, that's why everybody thought it would be impossible. And I think when Tom hears that something's impossible or it can't be done, that's when he kind of gets to work. So he created our flight training program and we started out in the Cessna and then we went to the um, extra 300 to do our aerobatics training, went to the L39 to get some jet work and then hopped in the F-18s. He truly knows everything that we're going through so he, he just really took the time to make sure that we were going to be good to go and it's been, uh, yeah, it's been great just knowing that door is always open. Um, I could, you know, text him or send him an email anytime I had some some questions about it and also Tom has taught us all how to how to film an action sequence that is something that when I first would, was watching playback of what I was doing I would think I was doing very uh, dynamic interesting intense work and I'd watch it back and it would just seem flat um, so yeah I got a, I got a master class in doing action scenes from the master I think Top Gun Maverick um, Checks a lot of a lot of boxes, um, you know. I think first of all, it will be entertaining. That's that's what you want. You want to go to a movie and, and be entertained. I think that this movie movie is very emotional. I think that it's something for all ages. I think it we're representing a group of people that are. Uh, for me, have the I have the utmost respect for. I think it's funny. I think it's dramatic. I think it's tense. I think it's um, high stakes. And I, as far as aerial, I mean, in aerial footage, we're you know we're doing something that's never been done. So it's also um, it's you know it, it's a very um, it's a very visionary kind of conquest that that we've led on. So I think I, yeah, I mean it's 
movies like this don't come along too often, so um, yeah, I'm very proud to be a part of it, and I think that people are in for a treat. Penny Benjamin is, um, she's actually mentioned in the first film. She's someone that, um, that uh, has had kind of on the again, off again relationship with Maverick over the years. It started the first time when they were quite young. Um, and you get the sense that they, they sort of come together, they have this sort of fiery romance and then falls apart, but then they keep coming back every, you know, they sort of keep coming back to each other. Um, she has, they have some, some things in common in that she's, um, she's a racer herself. She's, uh, she races sailboats. Um, and, uh, but when we meet them in, in this film, they're at, at different points in their lives. Tom is, a, is someone who gets things done, you know, and he's very positive and he's very, you know, he's, he has a lot of enthusiasm for what he's doing and wants everything to be the best. And I think it's what makes this, what made this film, the original film, and what makes this film so special is that you're seeing people doing extraordinary things and you know that they're really doing it. And that's kind of amazing to see that. And not many people can offer that. And he has done that consistently over the years. What I also really loved about this iteration of the movie is that there's also a scene on the sailboat where Penny is in charge of the vessel. And she's, she's driving, she's at the helm, and he's completely out of his element. Um, and I love that. I love that. And I think it was important that, um, you know, she has that agency and that strength. I think it was important to call back to the original film in the way that the original film was also kind of nostalgic in its own right, just for kind of a time in history and a version of America. Um, and that kind of character, that kind of promise of sort of everyone's vibrant and fit and, you know, people take chances and go their own way and, and it all works out, you know. Um, people are making their own destiny and, um, and it's incredibly optimistic. And um, so I think it, even the original was, was kind of a nostalgic film um, and this I think is as well and also does have those um, callbacks to it, which I think are important because it's, it has become an iconic movie. It's really fun. It's really um, atmospheric and vibrant, and um, it feels like a place where, you know, good friends come to hang out and have a great time. It's just very alive and um, full of music and good cheer. And, uh, and I think that Penny's spirit is kind of part of that. You know, she has a very positive spirit. I feel like she's someone who, you know, is one of those people that no matter what comes at her, she has a great attitude about it. Um, I really like that about her. I think the film focuses on the camaraderie um, of this kind of, of um, experience more than combat. It's really about, you know, the teamwork, um, the families, um, the relationships, um, focuses very much on the relationship between um, Maverick and um, Rooster. I think he has the technical skill and temperament that are really, that really are suited to this kind of epic scaled film. You know, he's able to have that kind of vision and oversight and skill and ability to, I mean, it's such an undertaking. Um, and he's really focused on and really able to, to focus on um, the human dynamics and relationships and interactions that make them matter. The character himself, I think, is a, at this interesting point in his life where he's saying, am I relevant still? In what way am I relevant? And how do I fit into the landscape now where we are? Um, I think that's sort of an interesting angle to take. Um, and I think that the, the journey of him and Rooster is really rewarding and, and, um, and moving. 
Um, and I think that for people who are fans of the um, the flying sequences in the first film, this is like another level. It's pretty extraordinary. I think it has all of that that the original had, but it's just sort of amplified, you know? I think that um, in terms of what they're able to film and the flying sequences, from what I've seen so far, it's just so impressive and it's so much more, it just, you know, it's that much more impressive knowing that they're really doing it. And how many people are really doing that these days? You know, when it's gotten to a point where it's so much easier, just you can do anything with CG, but he's actually, you know, Tom is actually up in those planes and they're choreographing those sequences and it's really, it's really, you know, kind of extraordinary. I was thrilled. You know, I had heard, certainly heard rumors of, of a sequel or something over the years. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a story that could easily have another chapter. Just being asked to be a part of this is, is kind of a, a feather in one's cap. And so that I was, I was just thrilled to be, to be asked, honestly. Uh, and then to be able to kind of do scenes with Tom and, 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 and be kind of a, a, a motivator of the story going forward is, uh, that's fun too. You know, uh, I just wish I could be in one, and get in the plane. He kind of set the tone for a, a certain style of, of character for some time, a cer certainly leading man and hero character of the cocky, kind of overconfident, hubris gets in his way, but he, he wins out at the end. And um, I mean, you see that in movies like Die Hard and you see that, you know, of, of that era, that, that character was, was kind of prevalent. And, and that's a very American kind of, uh, you know, situation where, where, where we like that kind of guys that maybe don't exactly follow the rules all the time and and that's very sexy to people and it's very intriguing to people and it's very watchable to people honestly and, and Tom is so perfectly cast in in that in that role Tom has a lot of experience at a lot, at a lot of things having the career that he's had and being being the person that he is um, and he doesn't do anything halfway uh, you know at all I mean the stories are are legion about how how committed he is. Um, so it's, it's not surprising to me that he, that he then went out and became an accomplished pilot because of course he did. He's um, very much a, a, a company man by the book guy, uh, has no real personal relationship with, uh, with Maverick, uh, but has a job to do and, and, and does it very well. Uh, and it's a, a lot of responsibility. He commands something like 2,000 aircraft and 200,000 men, and it's just, he's got a lot on his plate. Uh, and then when the, when the mission comes across his desk to, to get somebody to do it, he knows he's taking a, that, he, that there's a risk being taken uh, with, uh, with assigning it to Maverick, but he also has a boss. And we got to walk around on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, which is an active aircraft carrier. It was, being, it was in, uh, on the base getting refit for its next tour. But it, just the scope of, of, of that boat and the fact that it's, you know, it has 5,000 sailors on it when it's rolling and 90 aircraft on it when it's rolling. And you just think it's a city. And one, and there's a guy, the captain, who's in charge of it. And then, you know, then there, everybody's got their job to do. And it's, it's, it's so wildly complicated. Uh, and, and yet they, they do it every day and it works. So it's, it definitely gives you a, a sense of awe and wonder and respect about, you know, what, what really these people go through day, on a day-to-day -day basis. And watching just the base, how the base moves and how big it is and watching these jets take off and, and land. And you know they're going out to land on an aircraft. <laughs> like That's what they're going to do. It sounds like a fun day, you know? It's a pretty cool environment shooting on, on the base because these hangars are enormous and there's aircraft in them that aren't props. They're real aircraft. And it's... Uh, it's, it's from a scope standpoint, it's, it's impressive. You know, everywhere you look, there's something cool in the background that just happens to be there. And even during that time, we were seeing, you know, aircraft landing and helicopters taking off. Now that we do have this technology and, and we do have the like full support of the Navy and that they, they love the first movie so much too, as it created a whole, you know, generation of aviators. Um, so I think that they, they recognize the opportunity for that too, of like, look, look at what we have now. Like, look how cool this stuff is now. 
And, and I think that it, it will be. It will be an amazing, I think it's going to be an amazing movie and, and cinematic experience for people But because uh, I've, I've been around. I've been so excited just to be around it. When you see this movie, you should be both reminded of some of the things you liked about the first movie, but more than that, you should be blown away by all the new stuff we're doing, including, you know, having all the flying be real and be practical and putting those guys really up there. And believe me, as an actor, you know, <laughs> when you put the, somebody in an actual F-18 that's actually going as fast as it's going and flying, you know, however close, 20, 30 feet from the ground, upside down, that affects your performance. It's, it becomes a lot more real because it is real in that moment. And that's something you've never seen on movies before. I think one thing that's good about the movie now is that I really appreciate not just the work of, of the aviators and the people who fly the planes, but also the support. And, and my character is actually a support character. I, I, uh, I'm kind of wearing a couple different hats. I'm a test director, uh, but I'm also uh, a plane captain. I'm also Mav's friend. Um, and so it's really important, you know, you need one in order to do the other, you know. You need to have a pilot, and then you need to have somebody who knows how to fix the plane and get it off the ground. So, you know, watching those things work together, being able to play that, has been, you know, really remarkable. Hondo is Maverick's best friend, and he's a guy who can be honest with him. Like good friends, he can pull you aside and look you in the eye and say, hey, you're messing up. <laughs> you're better than this. You're blowing it. He can also say, hey, I know it was a tough day, but you killed it. It's great. They love you. It's really that support system and it's also a chance for us to you know it's one of those sort of Sherlock Holmes and, and Watson things where one of the, the strengths of Watson is that he allows you he allows Sherlock Holmes to think out loud that's really what the character is for it allows you to hear the thoughts of this other guy and so with the Hondo Maverick dynamic we've really leaned into that and we really use that relationship to get a little bit deeper into where Maverick's head is at and all this stuff to work in Jerry Brockheimer feels like a dream he is the best um, there's definitely a little bit of that imposter syndrome where you look around and go like, Tom Cruise, Jerry Bruckheimer, why am I here again? <laughs> like, you, you kind of, if, for most people, this is not normal. This is not our day to day. Um, but, you know, Jerry's from Detroit. He, he's real. It, it, there's no Hollywoodness. It's It's all you know, good ideas, it's, it's practical thinking, it's like, let's make sure we're doing this the right way, let's make sure we get what we want to get. And Joe Kaczynski has a very wry sense of humor that is unexpected and wonderful. Um, he's also somebody who is incredible in that he can direct a scene beautifully, though he is on a swaying aircraft carrier that is turning in the middle of the nowhere ocean. Um, he's, his, his technical expertise, his attention to detail, and his vision have been inspiring to me as an actor. I loved every day that I got to work with Joe. I think the movie will have a slight throwback vibe to it in some of the framings that they chose. That was on purpose, a bit of an homage to 80s filmmaking, but the technology, the, the depth of performances, and again, how Tom is, is putting people in cockpits, never been seen you know, in a movie like this before. Everything about this movie is, is tomorrow, it's the future. And so this is gonna set a whole new standard. Even though the first one is an action movie, there's, the relationships are so strong and so tense in some instances that that really gave it like a texture that it's not your average, um, you know, war movie, fighting movie, military movie. It, it was more than just the average military film because of the relationships in it. So the second one deepened those relationships even more. And it almost, I, when I read the second script, I came out of the office thinking, this is a relationship film kind of disguised as an action film. Warlock is someone that actually knows Maverick from back in the day. He was in, in my mind, he was in Maverick's class. He was one of the, he was one of the guys in Maverick's class that you didn't see in the film. Then their paths diverged, Maverick, went on to do other things and Warlock stayed on the, the officer track. Warlock was kind of, uh, he was the opposite of Maverick in that he followed the rules. He was a good pilot, I think, but he was, he had ambitions to kind of be in higher positions and he was successful and he became a two-star admiral. And so when they, and they hadn't seen each other in a while by the time the film starts, but their relationship is clear. You still see that they had an affinity for each other. He understands who Maverick is. 
Joe is a, uh, a big picture guy. So he kind of sets the frame, makes sure everything is authentic. Like I said, we have the greatest uh, naval advisors you could ask for. And once that's set, he kind of lets the actors do what they do. Um, so you have a lot of freedom within the frame. Because Tom knows so much, he'll come over sometimes and give you a little, little adjustment here and adjustment there because he's worked so closely with them. And like we said before, he flies himself. So he knows, Tom knows so much that he can help you in little moments when you're not sure about the actuality of something or if you're coming off realistically, he can just give you that extra, you know, extra little push, that extra little piece of information to help you feel like you're really a Navy pilot. You, you know you're in a Jerry Bruckheimer film, first of all, because he's a constant presence. Um, not, he doesn't interfere, but he just, he's always there. And it feels, to me, since I've been such a Jerry Bruckheimer movie fan, it's comforting to have him there. And every once in a while you look over at him and he'll look at you and give you a nod and you feel like, okay, I'm making the man happy. You know, he, he, if he's happy, then that means things are going well. I've literally had five to six pilots come up to me without me asking and say that the original Top Gun made them want to fly, made them want to be pilots. And it made it um, seem so cool and exciting. And also it gave them uh, a way into serving their country, but having it be like exciting and cool at the same time. When I came on board the film officially, just a few weeks before they started production, I suggested that we all go back and watch the original film. We all sit down and look at it together and we talk through the movie and try to go back to what it was watching Top Gun when it first came out, before it became uh, the, 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 the mythic film that it is now. And we discovered a very different movie. Um, there were all the scenes that we remembered uh, that that seemed to be such a big part of the movie were actually part of a, a much deeper ta tapestry. There was a, there was an emotional film in there. There was a, there's a competition film in there. There's a film that has that has uh, a great deal of humor, but it also has a great deal of drama and a great and and some tragedy. And during the writing of the film, also during the shooting and in the editing of the film. We were, we found ourselves time and again um, leaning towards recreating moments of the film, leaning towards, uh, uh, as, as opposed to creating new ground. And we found time and again that the more we let go of the original movie and went in our own direction, uh, the film became much more true. Uh, and, and that there really was uh, a, the, the possibility to make something that stood alone. It was very important to Tom and I when we, when we would talk about Top Gun that you, you didn't have to see the original movie in order to enjoy this one. The pilots in the film, uh, that, was a, that was a fascinating challenge. We, we very much wanted to have a, 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 a more developed group and a greater sense of the pilots around him. One of the things I said to Tom in that early meeting was that that the original Top Gun was not just about Maverick. It wasn't just about Maverick and Goose. It was about a culture. It was about the culture of these pilots and the competition that they all had with one another, the spirit of competition that they all had with one another. And we wanted to bring some of that in, but it also had to, again, be, uh, be its own story. Uh, and as a result, all of the, the pilots that were in this film uh, seem to be uh, seem to be more richly drawn. It seems to be a, a deeper uh, a deeper bench of pilots, but also a richer canvas. The thing that has me most excited about this movie, the thing of which I am most proud, is it truly is the kind of movie they don't make anymore. Uh, it not just in its scope and its scale, but in its emotion, uh, in the in its in its characters, uh, in its storytelling. Uh, it's it's a it's it's very much a modern film, but it's also very much uh, steeped in classic storytelling uh, that I that I just don't see anymore. It was very important to us that Maverick still be in the Navy, 
and that the Navy is really the only thing he's ever known. The Navy is his family. Uh, at the same time, uh, Maverick has, has been in the Navy for 30 years, and, it would, and, it, and at this point, as Ed Harris points out in the film, by now he should be an admiral, if not a senator. And that really formed the backbone of the story for us, not only in terms of who Maverick was as a character, but what his relationship with Iceman was. Uh, it answered the question of uh, how would someone stay in the Navy this long and remain where where he is because what mattered most to Maverick is that he always finds a way to fly. What that does at the beginning of our story is present someone who uh, is not just there because he is a great pilot but through a certain amount of guile and ingenuity because the system is constantly looking for ways to push Maverick out to pasture and Maverick constantly find ways to avoid that. Goose uh, permeates just about every frame of this film. Um, he's a character that everybody loved from the first movie, Maverick especially, and obviously his son Bradley, a.k.a. Rooster, uh, is a very important character in the film. Um, and it was a real challenge because, again, we, we, we didn't want to take audiences out of the movie and ask them to remember another film. So we had to reintroduce Goose as a character. We had to re reintroduce him as a spirit in the story. And that, uh, that very much came through, even down to the line, talk to me, Goose, uh, the decision of whether or not to use that line and, uh, and, and whether, to, whether to play with that as the reference of the film. I wasn't interested in trying to recreate or recapture uh, any of the magic of the original film, so much of which had to do with the time in which it was released, uh, the music that was popular in the day, the technology that was there, and who Tom Cruise was as an actor and a star as compared to who he is now. Um, more than anything, I just wanted to be part of a really good story. And that's all Tom and I focused on. Uh, from the very moment that I came on board, what is the story and why do I care? Uh, and we were, we were challenged every day to not focus on the original film, to, uh, to not be daunted by it and overwhelmed by it. And much in the way that Goose is a spirit that looms over Maverick, the original Top Gun was a spirit looming over us, we knew that we owed fans of the film a film that was just as good, if not better. Uh, but we also knew that the film we were making had to stand alone. And I think what we ended up with was a film that both honors and complements and elevates the original film. Top Gun Maverick is, is going to be the first film to ever shoot inside the cockpit of an F-18. Um, shoot outside of it, shoot with another one following it. It's pushing cinematic boundaries. It's like it's cinematic history just because it's never been done, but it's also not just taking a little bit of a step. It's taking this massive leap into this area that no one's ever dreamed of touching. It's planet Earth at 700 miles an hour with a 6K camera and an Oscar winning cinematographer and a fantastic director and mastermind producer and fantastic actor behind. So it's like, it's one of those things that's the perfect storm and it seems almost too good to be true. They hadn't really told us about the F-18, like if it was confirmed or not. So we thought we were just kind of, for the first month or so, flying to acclimate for just being in the cockpit. So when they told us about the F-18, somebody mentioned right after, like there are more people that have won Super Bowl rings that then have flown F-18s. And at that point, I'm like, all right, so I didn't make it as a professional athlete, but I'm going to be able to be like, to say that I was in an F-18. Um, so that's been extremely special. And yeah, that, that first moment was like, it, I just couldn't believe it. Filming the F-18 to me has been, it feels like the most intense self-tape of all time. Because you're there with four cameras facing you, two facing out, knowing that you have two hours to get this footage. 
Fanboy is a, is a weapon system operator. He's a backseater, uh, in other words. And he's this joyful guy that's happy to be there, and he's obsessed with all things Navy. And so the inception of Fanboy, at least the conversation with Joe, has been that in this documentary we saw Speed and Angels, there's this one guy that's, since he was a little kid, he just like, that's all he ever craved. That's all he ever tried to learn about. And this idea of a weapon system operator that's kind of the same, this guy that's just like, he knew what he wanted to do from day one, and he went and did it, created Fanboy. What I hope audiences walk away from Top Gun Maverick feeling is a sense of joy and having experienced something that they've never experienced before. It was knowing you're going to be a part of history. He's Everything he's done is fantastic and I don't know, he's a hero through and through. I first saw Top Gun when I was 10 years old with my dad. Um, I feel like for most fathers and sons, it's sort of a rite of passage. It's something that I think uh, fathers sort of hold on to and they're like, okay, I cannot wait to show my son this. And that's how it was with my dad. And I remember after seeing that movie, that's when I asked my dad to start taking acting classes and all that stuff. So um, if there's a movie that got me into acting, it's this one. Everyone knows sort of the lore of Tom, but I think until you are in the trenches with him and see how much he cares and see how much uh, sweat and blood and just TLC he throws into this thing, um, you won't understand what this movie means to him and how excited he is about sharing it with the world. When we went to Tom's trailer not too long ago and we saw it all cut together, you're like, holy shit, this is the most groundbreaking thing that will never be topped. And it's because Tom has 35 years of flight experience under his belt and he's and he knows exactly what looks good on camera, the physics of how to actually pull it off and knows logistically how to talk to the Navy and the, the air boss and how to actually how to actually execute this. I don't know if there's another movie star on the planet or another person on the planet that could actually make these aerial sequences happen. And when you watch them, your jaws on the floor and you're like holy shit, he did it when you get in an f-18 there's there's nothing like it the speed that you go it also feels effortless the things that you f that you think it's going to feel like I mean, it's, re it's really it's really hard to describe because you are you are hopping over you are hopping over mountains in a split second you have absolute control you can fly 10 feet off the ground and shoot 40,000 feet up in the air in a matter of a couple seconds. And so it's adrenaline and this this uh, thrill like you've never, ever felt. I would say Hangman is like a cross between Iceman and Maverick from the first one. He flies alone, so he flies like Maverick. Um, doesn't fly well with the team. Sort of lives on the edge, has a blast. Uh, and I would say he sort of has the ego of Iceman. He knows he's the best and... Uh, He's not here to make friends. He's, he's here to be team leader. I've been wanting to work with Jerry my entire life. I, every, every time Jerry's on set, I try to have lunch with him and just pick his brain um, because he's, he's had more experience in this business um, on, on, at, at his level than maybe anyone out there. He's, he's made some of my favorite movies, and we just um, I try to pick his brain as, as much as possible. I think... Top Gun Maverick is bringing back the same tone that they had uh, in the first one. I think that is bringing the competitive nature of pilots uh, like it had in the first one. But we're doing it in a much uh, updated version. Coyote is the life of the party. He is the jokes. He is the comic relief to all of the, the seriousness behind it. But Coyote is also the person who wants to be the best. And he essentially is the best. He graduated from Top Gun. He's one of the best pilots that have been called on a mission, but he just seems to always fall short and he always feels that he has to prove himself. When you're in the, the, the jet, you look out and it's like, oh, this is, you know, this is how fast we're going until we start doing a dog fighting. And it's like, <laughs> and that's when you really feel the real power. Wow. Wow. I miss it. I miss it. I actually have withdrawals. I text in a group message and I said, you guys, I was driving in my car and I put it in reverse and 
I felt like a G coming on, but it was my mind getting so that's when we were doing our training, like flying like two or three times a week. And I was like, you guys, I feel like G's coming on my body. They said, what is going on? They said, what is going on with you? I said, I don't know. I think I'm having withdrawals. I think I need to go pull some G's real quick just to flesh it out or something. Audience members have not been exposed to what they are going to see in Top Gun Maverick. I don't think, and I no, it's not that I don't think. I know no one has ever done what we have done before. And Tom Cruise always says that, like, we are doing something for the first time. Like, this is history. Nobody's going to be able to top what we do. Joe is a very smart director. He's a very smart person in general, and he knows what he wants. He has ideas of what he wants, and Joe has a great eye and skill set for visual uh, imagery. So what he's going to do for Top Gun Maverick is going to improve the first Top Gun visually. Not saying it wasn't, you know, up to par, but he's going to have audience members on the edge of their seats because the flight sequences that he's come up with and what he plans on doing with it is just outstanding. Plan Payback has been a lot of fun. I think it's been... Um the amount of research, I think, A, that has just gone into uh, what is being a naval aviator and what is being a Top Gun pilot and what it means to be, you know, in this case, you're talking about, you know, top four, top five percent of all naval aviators have been invited to this thing, right? So what that really means, the discipline that that means, the sacrifice that that means. I got to say, this cast, everyone actually, um, has been absolutely amazing to go through this journey with. Uh, we say it all the time to each other, we're not sure uh, we would have been able to make it without each other in a lot of ways. Um, I think we all leaned on each other in times where we were struggling or when we were legitimately tired, um, you know, physically tired from the flying. And we've also learned so much from each other and whether it's your, through your experience level, because some people have been working longer than others, whether it's through your work habits, whether it's through someone researching something in aviation, um, the flight training itself, like we literally find ourselves constantly learning from each other and, and just having fun and supporting each other and wanting each other to pull through. Our flight training and that swim test, I think was a big, big part of that. Um, it really brought us together as a group. Um, and which is interesting because you know in, in so many ways it's like life imitating art or art imitating life whichever way you want to put it uh, but it's this group of people who don't know each other Top Gun uh, and recruits and then all of a sudden they're put in this situation where like every single day they're pushed to their limit and pushed to their max and they become the best at what they are and in a lot of ways I feel like that's what we were doing in real life like we were thrown into a situation where we didn't know each other and all of a sudden we're put in flight training we're putting swim training and we're doing long days on set and we're being taught by one of the greatest if not the greatest that there is there's a few nostalgic nods uh to the uh to the old film again I mean you know there's you know when Tom walks in uh to, to meet the class for the first time. It is very similar and very reminiscent of uh, the first time he is sitting in class and they meet their instructor. Um, so a lot of similarities to that, uh, which are really, really, really interesting. Some great choices by Joe uh, to, to pay homage. I think one of the things that precedes Joe is like he is, has an amazing eye and can like set a frame up better than anyone that you've ever seen. Um, at the absolute least, you're going to look amazing. Everything in the film is gonna look amazing. You know that for sure. Um, and then the rest of it is just on you doing your job, um, which you know is great because that's also where a director steps in and helps you. Jerry's been great. You know, it's one of those, again, it's like getting to work with Tom. It's like you hear about these legends uh, and these people who have been in Hollywood for so long and have done so many great projects and you know Jerry has made one if not two or three of my favorite films all time so you you know you you see his name on a screen for so long and you see the tree and the lightning and you know <laughs> for his, his company's logo and you know you hear about all the things he does and you know how he's been 
integral in so many movies and careers and so many stories that he's told and been a part of telling and, and then you get to, to meet him and it's like meeting the Godfather. We're making a movie about these pilots who want to be better and who want to be the best. And by competing against the best, they then make themselves better and then they ultimately become this team and this unit together. And I think that's so much more of an interesting story and so much more of a timely story, just where we at in the world. Um, and also I think it just makes for great entertainment, to be honest with you, to watch people, you know, try and fail and try and fail and lift each other up and butt heads and then all of a sudden you see them start to come together and become one and become a team. And I think that's a, a, a very important message. I think you'll walk away hopefully, you know, seeing yourself in one of these pilots. I think that's a really cool thing It's like being able to look up at a screen and see yourself and be like, oh, that's me. I, I completely identify with that pilot and I'm going to go on this journey with that pilot. Uh, and become this team uh, with all these other pilots. And I think that's such a fun thing to do when you get to go to a movie like this. Pilot flight enrollment all across the world, I'm sure will go up everywhere. I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure of it. There's definitely gonna be a lot of people who are gonna wanna be pilots after this. Tom demands excellence from everything he does, no matter what it is. Every movie that he does, he does his own stunts, he's, do, he's in the planes here, he's flying his own plane in this movie. So I think that's really exciting for an audience to see an actor who's so committed to his craft and works so hard at it. It's no accident he's in one of the biggest movie stars in the world, if not the biggest. And there's a reason his movies do so well, because he puts so much time and energy and commitment into it. It's real deja vu for me to come back and make this movie with an iconic actor. And just we had such a great time the first time. But the difference the first time is we didn't know what we were making. We had no clue. We knew we were making a good movie. But this movie took off all around the world. I mean, Tom tells stories where he's in, in Africa in the jungles and kids will walk up to him and say, Maverick, Maverick. So this is all exciting stuff to come back and be Maverick again and at a different phase in his life and actually be a teacher working with these young pilots. It's a character piece, it really is. It, 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 it talks about what uh, individual in the military who is an aviator has to deal with in his life, the toll it takes on him the kind of excellence they have to have to deal with the physical, the mental strains, and everything else that a pilot goes through. You have to really take your hat off to these young men and women who actually climb in these planes and protect our country. What's so exciting about it, we have their best pilots working with us. We have the real Top Gun pilots. They've all been in combat. They're, they're just fantastic individuals. And you have no idea what you go through before a flight. They have three-hour briefings before a flight where Tom actually is coordinating and choreographing all the flights. So he's working with their aviators and they're designing what they're going to do. So Tom's right in the middle of this and doing everything just like an aviator would do it. It's amazing what, what we see in the cockpit and what an audience is going to experience. You're going to experience what it's really like to be a pilot, a fighter pilot, a Top Gun pilot. It's so exciting for me to watch this and you see this aerial footage, which is spectacular looking, and at such speed, it looks almost unreal, and it's real. It's the real thing. Besides the six cameras in the, in the cockpit, we're doing air-to-air, -air, so where you have one jet filming the other jet. Then we have ground-to-air, so you have ground, we have cameras on the ground filming these jets that are coming terribly close to them on the ground. And it's how close, even in the air, how our camera ship gets close to these monstrous planes that are flying, you know, at 600, 700 miles an hour. So I think it's pretty exciting. First of all, this is a movie that involves aviation, obviously. But aviation film like this has never been done. And Chanchanel will never be done again. That's how accurate everything is that we do in the air, on the ground, about these pilots, about their lives. It's a spectacular character study about aviators and what they exactly feel and the stress they go through and the things they go through and how they have prepared themselves and how we prepared this movie is extraordinary. I don't know if every, anybody will be able to do this again. Joe Kaczynski, our director, uh, what we went through to find a director to do this. And, and Joe had worked with Tom in the past and Tom knew what an excellent director he was, how he's into the details. He's, he's a techno whiz with everything. He's, he's about character and story 
and he's got this fantastic eye. I've been wanting to work with Joe for many years after I saw his first movie, how talented he is. And, you know, Tom picked up on that. And really, Joe had the makings of the idea that became the movie. I mean, he pitched the movie he saw in his head to Tom, and Tom said, that's what I want to do. Claudio is our cinematographer, and, and just to, to mount those cameras, the technology, the things he had to figure out, the right kind of cameras, and work with the various uh, different camera companies to make sure he got the right ones, and, and to make sure they're working every time you go up there. It's a, it's a lot of money. They better be working. He did a great job. He's got a great vision, a great eye. He's, he's uh, a master cinematographer. Well, I think Maverick carries on the legacy. Tom Cruise carries on the legacy. He's such a uh, terrific actor and individual, and he works so hard, and he cares so much about the process, and he's involved in every aspect of it. He just doesn't show up on the set and say, you know, remember his lines and go to work. He works tireless hours on the weekends rehearsing, going over the script, bringing the cast in, making sure everybody's able to fly. We have ways where the actors actually start learning how to fly to take these G-forces, and he starts them in a prop plane, then he puts them in a jet, and then we put them in an F-18. So by the time they have the F-18, their body's getting used to handling these G-forces, which these pilots take years to do. Everybody has to go through a training for ejection, so it's quite a process to be uh, an actor in this movie. Tom's a, an aviator, he's an excellent aviator, and he loves flying, he absolutely loves it. He has his own plane, and he just, any time he has free time, he's up in the air somewhere. So his love of flying will certainly come through in Top Gun, and it's certainly embraced by all the actors, because that's what he talks about when he's around them. The story works so well the first time you fell in love with Maverick, and you went, you became part of what his life was like, and how he went through his life, you became Maverick yourself as you're watching the movie. So anytime he got in jeopardy, you felt the angst and the pain that the character was playing and feeling. So I think that we're trying to establish the same kind of things with, with Tom again. But he's such a good actor that, that he conveys it in every movie that he makes. So I think it will be pretty easy for an audience to follow his emotional uh, journey on this movie. When I approached Tom in 2017 with kind of my take on the movie, I knew there were two requirements. One, the story had to be deeply emotional. And number two, the film had to be shot practically. So uh, I knew those were two essential elements to Tom, and uh, that's what we're doing. First thing we had to do was develop a motion picture camera that could fit in the tight cockpit of an F-18. So uh, my DP and I, Claudio Miranda, worked closely with Sony to develop uh, a new camera system called the Venice, uh, which allows us to put very high quality motion picture cameras, in fact six of them, inside the cockpit of the F-18 uh, to capture all the action of the film. So we have four cameras uh, on the actor themselves. Uh, we have a wide angle, a tight, two over the shoulders, and then we have two cameras pointing forward capturing the forward view. So uh, we have six IMAX quality cameras inside the cockpit with the actors uh, while they run the scenes. The second thing we had to do was get the cast trained to actually be in a Navy airplane. So they had to go through the uh, Navy training course to be qualified to sit in uh, uh, an F-18, uh, be prepared to eject, to uh, deploy a parachute, to swim in the ocean if they happen to land in there. So they had to go through all that training. Then Tom created a training program for them that took them from uh, Cessnas, which is kind of a small uh, propeller-driven aircraft, into an aerobatic airplane called an Extra 300, into an L-39, which is a small jet, aerobatic jet, and then eventually getting them into F-18s because they need to have the physical stamina to endure the intense forces on their body while doing some of these maneuvers. This film is a culmination of all of his experience from Top Gun through all the Mission Impossibles. Everything he's learned in making action films for three decades has kind of culminated in the making of this film. First of all, we're capturing in a way that no film has ever done before. Um, we are uh, working with the greatest pilots in the world, uh, Top Gun pilots, um, to actually fly these sequences for us. 
uh, we we're sp you know we spent hours I spent hours with these pilots going through the choreography of every scene to make sure that it's technically accurate uh, very exciting we're using tools that no one's used before including a fighter jet that has a camera mounted on the nose of it to shoot our air-to-air -air sequences um, we're using very high-tech tools but we're using them in a kind of old-school way there's no way we could have made this film without the participation of the US Navy they've been uh, uh, an amazing partner on this film we've been able to integrate our scenes into their training program so that while they're training the pilots we're also getting shots for our film so the partnership has been incredible um, we've gotten to go to uh, places that no one's ever seen before uh, bases that um, have never been shot on film or people have not even been able to see uh, we've gone to uh, Whidbey Island uh, Lamore Naval Air Station, Fallon, here where we are right now, um, China Lake, North Island. Uh, we've been out on the Teddy Roosevelt aircraft carrier uh, shooting. So um, we've gotten to see all these aspects of the Navy, and um, uh, they've given us their best pilots to fly these sequences. So uh, without their help, we would have never been able to pull this off. Well, it's all about finding the right story. Uh, the first film was a rite of passage story for Maverick, and I felt like this film also needed to be a rite of passage story. Obviously, Maverick's in a different point of his life, uh, but um, the kind of fundamental relationship in our film is between Maverick and uh, Rooster, uh, played by Miles Teller, who is Goose's son. And to me, the uh, reuniting or reconciliation of these two characters uh, really formed the emotional spine of this story and really gave, I think, all of us uh, the confidence that this was the right story and now is the time to tell it. I mean, to be working with Tom Cruise and Jerry Bruckheimer, you know, both whose films I grew up watching, is, uh, it's been an incredible honor. Uh, I learned so much from both of them every day on set. Uh, couldn't ask for better partners on a film, especially this one. Um, it's been a, it's been an amazing experience, and and uh, I feel very lucky. There is a couple sequences in this film where we got special permission uh, to bring in a very specific pilot who is cleared to fly uh, the F-18 Super Hornet at 30 feet above the ground. So there is one sequence where you're going to be so low uh, you can't believe it. I was on the ground as it flew over our head, and I can tell you it was one of the most intense experiences I've ever had on a film set. I think Maverick, in some ways, is the uh, character that made Tom a superstar. Um, so I think for him, this this film holds a very special place in in his heart, uh, knowing that it's kind of the film that kicked things off for him, you know, kicked it off to a whole new level. Uh, I think that Maverick is very close to Tom's. Maverick and Tom have a lot of similarities in terms of their personality. They're always pushing the envelope uh, and, and trying to see what they're, you know, always pushing the envelope of what they're capable of, pushing the envelope of the machine or airplane or, what, you know, whatever it is that they're currently in. Um, and uh, so it's, it's amazing to see Tom return to that role, put that jacket on, put the sunglasses on, and see him go back into that character. You're going to experience aviation in a way that you've never experienced it before. You're going to be lower, faster, more thrilling. Uh, we're really working hard to provide the ultimate big screen experience. I'm Kevin LaRosa, Jr., the aerial coordinator for Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I also fly the camera jet, the camera helicopter, flown the camera drone for the show, and I even drove the RC camera car for the show. So a lot of different job responsibilities, but in total, uh, my biggest responsibility on the show is the aerial coordinator. Everything aerial on the movie uh, that has to do with the Navy or how we film the Navy, from what platform, uh, I work hand in hand with production and the Navy to arrange that, facilitate it, and make sure it's done safely. Top Gun was a household movie. I grew up in an aviation family. Grandfather's a pilot. My father's a very well-known stunt pilot and, and motion picture pilot. So. Top Gun was sort of uh, my film growing up. It was, I mean, I've seen it hundreds of times. Um, uh, it's just, uh, it's, 
I, I can't remember my first reaction when seeing it, but it was an instant love of aviation. Every time we talked to Tom, it was, you know, guys, this has to be epic. You know, that's the word he gives us, and, and that's the word we use every time we go up there, epic. This has to be real. We have to show aviation in a way, using the technology that wasn't available back then on Top Gun 1. Now on Top Gun Maverick, we have to show the world what this is about. And, and it can't be fake. People know that. People know, people know when CGI is in there. You know, we take elements, everything's real, all these real elements, we may add some stuff, but for the most part, every single thing we're doing is in there. We're in the canyons at 350 knots. We're chasing F-18s. We're dogfighting with them. We're doing it all for real. And that's why it's looking the way it is. It's looking incredible. He's an A actor, but he's also an A pilot. Um, when he comes uh, to set and we brief, we go into these briefings, we go fly, Tom is a precision pilot. Uh, and he's, it's, a, it's fantastic to fly with him. It makes sense for him to be doing this for real. Also in this film is a very iconic aircraft. Uh, Tom is the proud owner of a North American P-51 Mustang. Not only is he the proud owner, but he's a heck of a pilot in it. Uh, and we are portraying this airplane in a sequence in the movie with Tom flying it himself. Um, great lengths of planning and, mission, uh, and, and trying to figure out what we wanted to accomplish with this airplane was done. But what I can tell you is that the airplane is being flown in a manner and shown in terrain and background that I don't think the world has ever seen before. Something remarkable happened on the first Top Gun, and I think we're doing that times 10 on this movie. Uh, they're taking that same romance of aviation, that same excitement, that thing that makes my heart beat fast when, when I'm going to go fly an airplane or helicopter because I've never lost that. That is part of this movie. Um, and I think that this movie not only carries on the legacy of the first Top Gun, but I think it's, it's flying it way further out there than that first one ever was. Um, I'm very proud of what I've already seen in my, you know, small piece in helping them create this. And it's, it's something I'll never forget, and I don't think anyone will forget. It's a true pleasure working with Joe. He's involved in every single brief. The thing I love about Joe is, is he sits there and he listens to the pilots and the aviators, and, and he gets an idea. He knows exactly in his head sort of our limitations. But what the great part about Joe is, is he knows in his head, he knows that product he wants, and he's able to translate that to us. So when we're sitting in a briefing, which Joe is always involved in, you know, Joe's going to sit there and say, you know, I'm really feeling like this should end up dead center underneath you and break into the sun over here. I mean, he's, he's involved in every creative step, but I got to say, every single time Joe has given us a, a bit of information and said, that's really cool, but can you do it a little bit like this? Every time we do it a little bit like this for Joe, we're like, oh man, he was dead on. He's right on the money. He has the vision and he has the gift uh, for being able to do that. And it's just a pleasure working with him. I didn't really realize how big of an impact Top Gun has on pop culture and <laughs> humankind until I got the role and I started seeing it everywhere and everyone was saying like, everyone who hears about it is like, don't mess this up, please don't mess this up. Like this is, and uh, everyone is incredibly passionate about it and ha has this like personal attachment to it. Like they, it, it feels like theirs. That's what's so cool about the movie, the original is, is it, it feels personal to everyone and everyone has a real attachment to it in a in a, in a very intimate sense um, and so I didn't quite realize the power that and, and the legacy that it had until until I signed up and I got on the saddle the ante I'm pretty sure is being so upped that it will not be able to be upped again um, I d didn't know so much about this world walking into it and I certainly have never ever seen any of the, anything like the footage that has been gotten thus far. Um, all the flight footage is totally unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, and I think because everyone is very similar to the sentiment of, the, of, of Top Gun, the movie itself, everyone on this movie is trying to better beat themselves. We, I think, are providing the audiences w with the closest possible opportunity to be sitting in those cockpits because you're seeing our faces be pulled down by G's and you can't help but watch that and feel that. You feel, you feel the weight and you feel the aggressiveness of the maneuvers and you, you are instantly, you're sitting in the, in the cockpit and you're strapped in. It's, it's kind of something that you can't really replicate with CGI. You just simply can't. You, you can't fake it. 
there were so many moments throughout this process where I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was happening. Um, I think I honestly, and I can say this now because we've shot pretty much the entire movie, am scared of heights. Um, and that was something I didn't really reveal um, because I wanted to be in this movie so badly. Um, and so in some ways I got an incredible experience, not only for the obvious reasons, but also because I got to overcome this fear um, and I got to kind of transform and really conquer this. I thought I was like, I'm going to either have to quit or get fired so many times because I was like, this is petrifying. And it's like at all sorts of anxiety is coming up and everything. But the more, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without Tom's training. So because we got exposed to it time and time again, eventually it becomes not normal, but a little more comfortable. I think Tom created this aviation training um, very generously because he knew that this is what he wished he had on the first one. Um, I think he went into the first one, uh, everyone did, uh, ill-prepared, um, and he, he, Tom knows what it takes and what, what um, should, better than anybody, like what kind of training is needed to get actors comfortable in these situations with these kind of in these en environments as fast as possible so that they can do the acting that they need to do but that that there isn't an overload of information um, and so I, I don't think it, we, we could have done it without the training I think Tom was uh, on point by by doing that and um, I, I personally couldn't have ever done it without the training <laughs> Bob is a wizzo um, he's the backseater to Monica Barbaro's character, Phoenix. Um, and he is kind of a quiet guy, a um, bit reserved, you know, doesn't drink, doesn't swear. Really, really highly intelligent, um, but maybe a little on the socially awkward side of things. Um, and uh, I'm, I feel really lucky to play Bob because I think uh, Wizzos are a highly underappreciated uh, part of the Navy. I think Joe is an extremely uh, clean and stylish um, director. He has extreme, extremely good sense of, of aesthetics um, and can make these absolutely gorgeous and pristinely aesthetic masterpieces and that, are, that have his, uh, like his print on them, his imprint. Um, and I, that's what we're getting with this movie. So in some ways, he's definitely doing justice to the aesthetic of the original and the cool kind of 80s rock and roll um, vibes, but also giving it this totally crisp, um, clean, and cool, like the epitome of cool, uh, just like blanket around it that, that I think only Joseph Kaczynski can really do. I think having Jerry a part of this one is... Uh, it, couldn't happen without him he's it's like it's like it's like a family and I think he is you know at the helm of it and it has to move if it's moving forward it has to be you know he he's a legend and so and this is like his was one of his many babies and it was uh when I when I think of Top Gun I think of Jerry Bruckheimer when I think of Jerry Bruckheimer I think of Top Gun um and so having him on set all every day you know remembering and bringing his experience with the first one to this one um, and tying all these threads together and, and just keeping the continuity of the world um, flowing from the first to the second was, was Jerry's specialty. What is Tom not bringing to Top Gun Maverick? He is like, he is very much the, the nucleus of this thing and he, I think, is bringing his extremely extensive knowledge and library of experience from all these movies that are highly successful and highly entertaining to this movie and it's kind of he's you know, the pinnacle of all of this all of this stuff that he's learned and he's and he's also uh amazingly uh, eager to share that with with us we've been so lucky that he is like very earnestly wants to pass this extremely valuable and rare knowledge onto us um, and put it into a, a movie um, and and so Top Gun is getting this this it's like you know the bottleneck of, of all of Tom Cruise's knowledge 
and about filmmaking and about making a good, fun, entertaining, and dramatic movie. I think, ideally, people are going to walk out of this movie feeling like they stepped foot in an F-18 and they went for a joyride. And, um, and I, think, I think it's going to be... I, I, think, I think it's going to do that. I was in college, and uh, a bunch of guys were like, what? You've never seen Top Gun? What's wrong with you? Uh, so we went and watched it, and I remember at the time I was deciding to become an actor, and um, I remember thinking, man, that would be so cool to do a film like that. Uh, and here we are. I think the intention is that the audience can feel as as closely as possible what it is like to be in the actual jet. Um, there's nothing like it, but if they can film in the cockpit, you know, six cameras going, you get a little bit more of that 360 sense of, of what it might be like to be in these jets. And, um, you know, we want the audience to, to be able to feel that rush. Joe actually told me in the audition, so this was before I had the role, uh, and I think he was sort of almost vetting people to make sure I didn't freak out. Um, he told me that the actors would all be in jets, and I stopped and I was like, wait, we're, we're gonna be in the jet flying in these scenes, and he's like, yeah. And I just, I remember I got chills, and I got so excited, and also like, my heart kind of broke because I was like, oh God, I want this so bad. If I don't get this, I'm going to be so sad uh, because that just sounded like the coolest, coolest thing on earth. His passion for flying is something that I think is really contagious uh, and it's crucial for a film like this because this is an aviation movie to the nth degree. He designed what he would for himself, a, a really intense training regimen. Um, and, and we went through that and, you know, we had to because, because pulling G's is uh, such a taxing experience that in order to also act and do props and roll tapes and do all these other things that we had to do in the jet, you need to be able to, pulling G's is to be the least of your concerns. And for anyone who did get nauseous, you have to be able to overcome that mentally or at least have had the training to know how to overcome it uh, in order to keep going. Being in an F-18 is unreal. It feels so different to be in the cockpit than to be watching one go by. The intensity is just so much more palpable in one of those things. And it could be because um, all of the ejection procedure training, you know, like you, I, I'm just somebody who starts thinking of all the things that can go wrong and trying to be like, yeah, it's fine. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty crazy experience. I watch aerial footage now with a completely different eye because being in the plane and seeing what, how, how those things work is, is, is like nothing else. But I think in this movie, I think they're going to make people feel as closely as possible what it is actually like to be up there and to see a plane at that distance. Phoenix is, she's definitely a tough cookie. She keeps emotions close to the chest. Uh, and I think she has to for the, for the nature of the job that she does. Um, uh, she doesn't underestimate anyone. I think a lot of the guys at first don't take Maverick very seriously. They don't really know about his reputation and, and they just uh, assume they can beat him. And I think she's a little bit more, I think she's a little smarter than that. Um, she, uh, she's very loyal to Rooster and to her Wizzo, Bob. Um, she, she takes this training very seriously. Uh, she, I don't think she's been handed anything on a silver platter. So she has to work twice as hard to, you know, be at the same level. Um, and I think she does that. I think the sequel has been in the works for a very long time. I think Jerry and Tom have been talking about it for many, many years. And, you know, it was very important for everybody to make a grounded film and something that was very tactile and not relying on a lot of CG. So our efforts were always geared towards that. And then it obviously... Um, 
character in emotion and figuring out what that meant because it is my first conversation with Tom when we talked on the phone uh, he was in the middle of shooting mission and he said to me you know it's a competition film and that's family uh, that's the emotion of it it's about the characters we have to remember that and stay true to the original so that was very kind of we knew what our pillars were as we were starting to write the script working with Tom this is my third film with him and it's complete dedication when you're working on a film with him and he makes you better uh, as a producer crew member director whatever you're doing on the film you want to be at an all-time high working for him and um, he is great to work with he is it's all he's got it all I mean you it's all always about the story and the emotion working with him you as a producer you get you get the opportunity to work with somebody that's the top at his craft and you get to bounce ideas off them and he's done more movies than all of us and he's seen it all so you're learning you're you have a partner and you also have the benefit of watching him as an actor so it's it's pretty um it's pretty awesome it's, it's like working on the dream team and having jerry Bruckheimer as your producing partner on a film is um it's it's a dream you can't you can never ask for more i mean it's it's jerry's Jerry has seen it all. Jerry has done a lot of movies. He's seen every situation. He knows how to handle them. He is very calm. He's very respectful. He lets you do your process. He will come in uh, and talk to you. And he's, you know, when he's got his points, he'll let you know. But just having Jerry as a producing partner is like the best thing ever. So our cast training program was a long time in the making and we learned a lot along the way and Tom and I started having um, phone calls very early on hours at a time developing a program that eventually became our cast training program I did not understand it Joe did not understand it Tom was is an aviator Tom understood flying Tom understood the planes Tom understood what the actors would be doing in the plane and what they how they would have to properly train to do what they needed to do in the plane. We interviewed them and told them exactly what things were going to be like and ex explained to them what they would be feeling in the air. So having Tom help and develop the, the, the training program was priceless. I mean, we, we, we wouldn't be doing anything we were doing on the film if that did not happen. We knew we wanted Maverick to be Maverick of today and, and the proper age of Maverick today. We had no intention of making Maverick, you know, 30 years old or anything like that. We wanted, where are we now in, in the story? And that was, that was rule number one for us and rule number one for Joe and Tom. Uh, but also, you know, where do we leave Maverick and what's been happening in his life? You know, what has he been doing for 34 years? So I think we came to a great storyline of where where he, where has he been and also what has he been dealing with for all of these years after his best friend died. I think any movie goer on, on the planet will enjoy this film. I think it's it's naval aviation, aviation period at its finest, armed forces at its finest because it's a film about family it's a film about emotion it's, a, it's drama it's competition um those are the things that the the through lines of the movie that's that's driving story character um it's got a lot of great action it's a lot of fun it's a ride but it's also a drama on the ground and i think that's a lot of fun and i think that's what translate around the world for us because it's it's truly about the characters and all of our action is in the air which is very unique for movies of today Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.